Well, that's up, YouTube. Welcome back to Wrenching Wrecked. So, we've been messing around on this thing a little bit. Got the bars kind of roughly on. I don't know if I'm going to actually run those. They're not dimpled, which causes some problems on the wiring in terms of running that, just like the Evo Sporty was. Um, so, these are the ones that are on it. If you look down straight from this, the right side's definitely tweaked in. I like those bars, but they're tweaked. So, I dug through some more stuff at the shop today. We got three more sets over here, some smaller apes, and I know for a fact I got a brand new set of six inch risers sitting around here somewhere, so maybe those will go on with the short apes. Or we'll do some hard pullbacks. I know my buddy's got that set up on his wide glide, and it's really comfortable for long hauls. A little heavy on the front end. I think he's four over on that one, but anyways, we're back now because got some stuff done at the shop this morning. Had some time to kill. Daddy's working up there dealing with customers, so I'm going to try and yank this wheel off, which I've never done on a soft tail before. So let me pop these little covers off, I think, and figure out exactly what we need to do to get this wheel off. I got a couple new used good 16 tires at the shop, just a factory Dunlop Harley style, um, and then I got some bigger, older ones, which isn't ideal, but it's better than this. So, at least get a tire on there for now, and if we gotta swap it out later, we can, but I don't wanna sink a ton of money into this yet when we don't really know what direction we're going. I'd like something with less dry rotting on the sidewall and a little more tread, because there's salty roads out there right now. So let me get you guys set up, and then we'll start ripping parts off of this. So, got the bike back up in the air. We'll start with these covers so I can get to some stuff. If there's a better way to do this than the way I'm doing it in terms of taking this apart, let me know. This is new territory for me. Soft tail things. Uh, we picked up a new battery today too. That should be helpful. Oh, that's nifty. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, just pop those out. Luckily they're not stripped, so that's helpful. And with the new battery, uh, we should be able to crank this over, but now we have the carb off too, so gotta put a lot of parts on before we can fire this up again. I did start making a parts list, so I gotta get that ordered here later on today. I think I'm going to get a longer clutch cable anyway, and then that'll give us a lot more options in terms of bars, even if I go with something lower. I just don't like the way that that clutch cable on there is laying out right now. I think it would work, but that's not my favorite. Oh, sorry. So there's a little bracket on the back of this as well. But now we can at least get to the axle. So covers are off. Bolt on that side, not on this side, but they... Lock clip. So we yank that cotter pin out. Like so. And pull the axle nut. What's the worst that can happen? Spacer uh, nine sixteenths, I think, on the adjuster. Okay, cover plate gets just mounted in there, pinched in there, rather. thread these little screws in while we're moving stuff. I don't need to go losing any of this stainless hardware. So we'll thread some of these back into the gold bracket. While we're ripping these apart, 
Stay a little more organized since this is all new territory. And this should just give us enough room on the adjuster. Whatever I'm doing on your side, I'm doing on the same side over here too. So we'll loosen that one up enough. And we'll pop the castle nut off. Spacer. Leave those just like that. And we should be able to kind of work the lift here and make this cooperate with us. Put a little bit of weight on that tire. Like that. I don't know how far I'm gonna have to go forward here to clear the belt. We'll just have to readjust the belt tension, unfortunately. But I maxed that one out on the caliper. Hmm. too much weight on here. Let me just get the axle out. Then I'm gonna reassemble all these spacers and things just the way it came off. So that'll go down here. So castle nut, big washer, machine spacer, swing arm, regular spacer. And we got the same thing over here, but the caliper is our spacer on this side. Come on, let go. Pop the belt off over here. This would be way easier if I pulled the belt guard. semi-free, so we'll come up with the bike. And just wrestle this right out of here. Caliper's gonna fight me on the tire. What else am I hitting? Chain guard. All right, let's yank the chain guard. Give myself a little bit more room half inch bolt on the back at least, even if I just pull the rear mount. I think that'll give me enough room to shift it up. Probably doesn't do any good showing you guys the other side, huh? Kinda wanna coat all of these chrome bits black too. I'm not, not a, I love chrome on old choppers and old things like that, I just, there's a lot of chrome on this bike. Uh, there's a second one. Let me grab a socket. <clears throat> Where's my drill? This was a sporadic video today. I was not intentionally planning on doing anything on this for a little bit, but When the opportunity presents itself, sometimes you just run with it. All right, so we got a castle nut or an acorn down here and a through bolt. That go. So now we can shimmy the chain guard a little bit. So just those two. There's got to be another one up front. There is, but it's buried behind the frame. Now, jiggle this free. And that little bit gave us enough room here to pop the wheel off. more chrome. So I think that'll stay for now. Get over here. Come on. Come on. Come on, chefs. Inside. Pups are being a pain today, so 
they're confused. I came home so early. So there's one more bolt on here if we want to pop this belt um, cover off. Maybe I'll do that. I'm shooting black again later. I kind of like the idea since we already did the tins in a satin black that I don't really care all that much about of doing basically all the chrome in a gloss finish. So it'll have that kind of nice contrast looking at it, but instead of chrome, it'll just be gloss black, but we'll hold off on that. So the wheel's off. I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time going over anything else. I started messing around in the last video, beginning of this video on the handlebars. That's probably all coming off again while we mock up some of these things. And then at some point, I'll try and get home early from the shop today. Stop licking the moped, you freak. Yeah, you. Um, we'll try and get back here at some point today and give the carb a quick once over. If we can get that done, then we can throw some gas in it and see if she fires up on the new battery. I'm hoping that should alleviate most of the problems that we had trying to start it the other day. So we'll get this set up, get the wheel back in, at least make it roller-ish again, I think, and then keep jamming. We'll be back. Wheel is mounted. I just ran at Dunlop 401. It's the tire I had in the best of shape. Still not new, but better than the old one because there's actual treads. This will probably be a temporary measure, but it's good enough for now. So we can throw that back on now. We'll get you guys set up and surprise, surprise. Daddy made it out here. She's switching up our sporty tank. So here is what we currently got. Just need to make sure that this is gonna fit, but I think this one's gonna be the one going on here. Nice sparkle green flake. Hopefully it fits. If not, I'm gonna get yelled at. You will. I will. And looking at it now, we'll find out. Well, this is a fun one. Daddy's gonna learn how to take a gas tank off of a Sportster while I put a wheel on the uh, big twin. I think it's that hard.
soft tail wheel is back on. This is just kind of sitting while we were waiting. Rerouted the electrical. I still got to hook up this goofy terminal to a hot spot somewhere on here for the tail light. But other than that, we should be closer on this. I put the new battery in and lo and behold, obviously there's no carb or anything hooked up, but cranks like it's supposed to. Way better than it was the other day. Daddy's ripping apart the Evo. Ready to put her new tank on, but I need to steal the pet cock off of this one to make all of that work. So that's draining gas. It's filled to the brim. So that'll take a minute. We'll be back when it's all done. Daddy's tank doesn't work and now she's mad at me. Apparently this one's got the middle pickup, the other one's got it in the front. Hits the ignition switch. Bummer. Daddy's tank didn't work out, so now she's upset. I had no idea this was a free tank that was saved from the scrapyard. Ended up being in really good shape, so we recoded it, worst case, add it to the swap meat pile. Then I've been jamming on this thing. We got mini apes, well, short little apes on four inch thick risers. Don't know if we're gonna keep it that way. I also got these little pullbacks that I kinda really like. This is more my style. But if I do these, I'm gonna do six inch risers, which we got sitting here. So lots of mock-up, lots of test fitting, not filming all of that, which means one more beer of messing around with things. So I went from the apes from the iron head. I don't like those because they don't have the dimples and I'm not big on running through the bar stuff if I don't have to. I know that's the right way to do it. I've done several conversions for other people, but it's not my jam. I like having everything out in the open. If it's needed to be fixed on the side of the road, I don't have to worry about fishing or having wires short out through the bars. So then we tried the four inch stubby risers with these ones. I was really happy with this. I was 100% ready to run them. And somehow I missed the fact that they're dimpled. Uh, not a factory dimple, it got hit by something. And the throttle doesn't like working on that. So these ones are out now. So we're back to the buckhorns, which is kind of what I wanted. A six inch rise on some buckhorns. Right now where there's positioned, I only got one bolt in and they're very loose, but this is what I was going for. They have the dimples on the bottom side of the bars to keep the wires underneath the clutch lever, because that's how that goes on these. I don't know why they didn't just do the switch housing, whatever. Goes through the switch housing, or through the clutch housing from the switch, through the clutch housing on these little dimples and then gets clamped down. Tis what it is, but this is kind of the stance that I am into. Some slight pullbacks relatively in line with the forks there. So you can reach them. I look at bikes in the sense of if I'm going down the highway 70 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour or whatever it is with a sissy bar and a big camping rig and want something that I can kind of lean back and grab onto. This is that set up to me. So I'm like, all right, cool. This will work perfect. This is the stance that I genuinely wanted. I was just looking to try and do something a little different. Well, I just opened up this package. It's a V-twin one. So 
They're usually pretty good with that, but let me pop this bolt out. Set you guys here for a second. This is the, the story of my life today. Daddy's so mad at me about that tank. I was all excited we had a stock replacement one and all the bungs line up, but the Petcock mount hits the ignition switch. I'll show you that in a minute. Let's take off the top tree. What's wrong with this? Hmm. All right, so it's a split riser design, but we have the riser upper here which mounts there, fine. There's a little overhang here, but that's better for supporting the bars anyway. We have a right, and we have another right. <laughs> so brand new out of the package, they sent uh, two of the same risers. Somebody mispacked those. So we'll get a hold of them tomorrow, get another set on the way, and go from there, which is unfortunate because I would have just bought another set today anyway. But that's where we're at. I got a new battery in. I was gonna scramble and try and get the carb hooked up, but I don't think that's necessary. I know that this will run. So we'll clean the carb up and get that all hooked up in the next day or two. This will wrap up this video. Here is the gas tank issue. It's right in the middle of the tank. And let me open the door. I left the tank outside. On the stock tank. here front side of the tank so if you look at the side of it that's right here so the three inches farther back on the other tank caused all sorts of problems and now I'm probably in trouble I don't know how I was supposed to know that I mean I guess I could have actually looked better at the tanks but I didn't so that's where we're gonna wrap this one up Evo Sporty's apart again I'll put that tank back on tomorrow that's quick and easy I just gotta swap the petcock over swap the petcock back onto that one bolt that onto there then that's a runner rider again we got two bolts and a seat mount bolt. And then this thing, this is kind of the, we're playing around a little bit, but fresh tire on the rear, fresh-ish tire on the rear. Battery is cranking perfectly fine. And all the wires are already extended. So it's just a matter of kind of figuring out what we want to do on here. And I'm waiting on the sissy bar before we get into mounting the rear fender because I don't know where the brackets are going to land on that. Other than that, we should be pretty quick. Oh, I have a million motorcycle parts. I have levers, I have controls, I have all these little brackets. You know what's killing me? I don't have an extra clutch pin. <laughs> the stupid little plastic bushing pin that goes in between on the newer style levers. I do all the older stuff, so I got a million of, where are they? This type the pins and whatever else. I found all of those for the old style cables. I don't have anything for newer Evo stuff. So I don't do a lot of Evo stuff, so it makes sense. It's just waiting on like a $2 pin to put the clutch cable and stuff back on if I was gonna try and slam this together and rip it down the road. But we're not doing that. So we will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. Thank you for dealing or waiting patiently on the moped build. We got the exhaust back from ceramic on this. So nice ceramic silver. Lots, actually there's really not gonna be a lot more. Um, I'm on to final tuning on this. We're not doing videos on that. This is kind of done until it's finally, finally done done and then I'll do a hard rip around. Show you guys what a little two stroke Gorelli feels like going down the road and make up for the not tuned, not running good, not taking more than half throttle video from the last one. So end of the Gorelli videos. Thank you for being patient and sticking around if you are here for the Harley stuff. This stuff will always be on the channel. This was something fun and exciting. And if you didn't know, daddy loves this thing, which gives me brownie points when things like this happen on our tank. We'll see you tomorrow.